To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. The future of education and your child or grandchild's ability to learn and compete for the jobs of the future. And how will that matter to all of us in terms of economic security, national security? My guest today, Assistant Dean and Superintendent Dr. Joel Herbst. He oversees the Florida Atlantic A.D. Henderson University School and FAU High School, both public schools. We'll talk about that more. We really appreciate you being with us this day, Doctor. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. We'll jump into our conversation in a moment, but you gave me a chance to come visit the school recently. Let's give you at home a look at that, and then we'll continue our conversation. Which one shall we talk about? If you're just chiming in now, make sure you solve number three is what I want to see. This middle school class in advanced math... It would just be the opposite, because you can't subtract those. ...creates a real buzz when it opens young eyes to a lifetime of possibilities. It's what they do every day at FAU's A.D. Henderson University School for K through eighth grade. Preston Hoover gets it. Science is gonna help with many things such as if you try to like code a drone to do something. So this is our flight simulation lab. And the school's superintendent, Joel Herbst, says these learning labs just work. This is a different approach to educating students and it gets that science and math to stick. So last year we won the national 2023 drones in school title. Who knew science and math would be so fun, right guys? Yeah. And now you're gonna go number one again this year? Yes, we are. Fun and opportunity within reach in the science lab. Fantastic job. The flight simulator lab. It's bringing science and math to life. The math class. I, I hear fantastic answers. Ethan Daniels sees it. I want to be a computer scientist. Alexandra D'Agostino is dreaming big. Yeah, I really want to be like a doctor someday. So is Noah Edwards. And what about you? Um, well, I'm in aerospace, and so I love learning how science can like be applied in the real world. Science, technology, engineering, math, or STEM courses. They're at the heart of this public school. I often say when I speak to, to folks about math and science, this country's at a Sputnik moment right now. In one recent international math test, U.S. students scored lower than their peers in 36 countries. There's a crisis in this country relative to the math and sciences. Crisis, strong word, but you think it's appropriate here. I, you know, I would take it a little bit further. I'd say it's probably the number one national security uh, focus that we should, we should have, right? So all of these students we have in these schools, K-12 now, uh, they're going to fill the jobs of the future. Uh, so the notion of computer programming, artificial intelligence, uh, flying uh, pilots, uh, the rocket industry. Alexandra Aristotle. At A.D. Henderson, administrators say they're doubling the state average on math and science scores. Our mission really is to serve as a laboratory school, so to investigate a variety of different techniques in teaching and learning, uh, to prove what is working and disprove what is not, and then spread that across the state of Florida first and across the nation second. On a mission to secure a future for these youngsters and a country that will count on them to lead the way. And as I said at the outset, joined by Dr. Joel Herbst, we greatly appreciate you being here. What an eye-opening tour, what great youngsters you had. And again, the high school uh, nearby as well. Both public schools, talk a little bit more about A.D. Henderson, briefly about its history, how they interconnect with FAU, and where students come from. So A.D. Henderson was established in 1968 on the mm -hmm. campus of Florida Atlantic University. It's a K-8 public school. Uh, students are selected through a lottery system. Mm -hmm and they're selected based on the demographics and socioeconomic status representative of Florida. Okay, and so you told me when we were out there, you, you have students as far away as Carroll City, uh, yes. in the heart of Miami-Dade and beyond. And then the high school, the same thing, both public schools, uh, FAU runs those schools, but they're under the state umbrella of public education. That's correct. We're, we're a legislatively established lab school. A Florida State has one, University of Florida, Florida A&M has one as well. When you talk about lab school, what do you mean? I was so impressed by what seemed to me to be a concentrated effort uh, in the STEM, STEM subjects, science, tech, engineering, math, to take them out of their classroom learning and let them see in a very real way how they'll be able to apply that. Is that the secret sauce? Yeah, so we're an experimental platform. Mm -hmm. our, our focus is to bring education to life to make the connection points between what they learn in the textbook, what they learn in lecture, and to actually having 
hands-on programs where they can not only experience uh, what the textbook is, is imparting on, on what they're trying to learn, what they're trying to capture, but also the hands-on piece, uh, which really is what I, what I consider to be the sticking point. So it's bringing science to life, math to life in a very real way with the jobs of the future. You say sticking point. You see too often we're not doing that? I think when you look at uh, a textbook type environment uh, where, where students are, are trying to get an understanding of uh, different subject matters, uh, basically from printed text, you lose a lot and you gain a ton when you go hands on. You told me that uh, your budget uh, is not demonstrably different than any other public school. Is that fair? That's correct. We're funded the same exact way any public school would be funded. So. Some are having labs and doing some of this. Some other educators may look on and say, I'm doing a bit of that. Are you doing more of it? How are you doing it differently, given that budgets are not demonstrably different? So we focus on it. Uh, so we are a lab school. One of our focus points is creating labs uh, so that what they're learning in the classroom portion of the education can be translated into the lab space. And that lab space is based on what they'll face in jobs of the future, preparing them. Uh, talk about uh, something that I was impressed with. You go through the school and you see all these bright youngsters and you assume they're all not necessarily the case. They don't come to you, all of them. Some certainly do. But are the majority of them gifted students when they arrive or are they students who need a hand and help and for somebody to help make that light bulb go off and connect life and opportunity and math and science with the real world? Which is it? We don't even have a gifted program, okay. so all of these students... You wouldn't know it, seeing it. Man. Thank you. Uh, all of these students come to us as, as they may. We have wraparound services to support students who need additional work and support academically. And students who accelerate, uh, we take an entirely different model. There's no seat time served at our school, so you accelerate at the point of your ability. For instance, the math class you visited, that advanced math class, is actually a college, college credit earning middle school math class. So the, this notion of a student has to progress uh, sequentially uh, doesn't work for us. We found that students who can accelerate faster, we not only uh, provide them the opportunity, uh, we support that in many different ways. And again, from all socioeconomic backgrounds at the school, very important to point out, school's been there long enough that you have a long track record to see. How are students who graduated there four, five, six, eight years ago, is it making a real world impact when they come back and talk to you? Is there any data that says this is making a difference when they're out post-college looking for work, looking for opportunities? That's yeah, a great question. So we track data. Uh, it, is the old, it is our report card as mm -hmm. a school. Uh, so we're not only looking at as the, as the student progresses vertically through the grades, but we're also looking at what that student does post leaving our school. So if they don't stay for a high school, uh, we track them and see what their success levels are. And if they stay in our high school, of course, we continue to track them. Our high school, again, is a public school, but completely unique. It's a completely a dual enrolled school. It is the only school in the nation where students earn their bachelor's degree cost free uh, at the same time that they learned that they earn a high school diploma. Is the data saying to you it's propelling them into jobs they might not otherwise have when they get done with the K-8 high school through college? What are you seeing? Absolutely. So it shows up in a variety of different places. Number one, it shows up in a number of national merit scholars we have at the school on a, on a regular basis from year to year. Secondarily, it shows up on first choice colleges. So the majority of our students finish their bachelor's degree at Florida Atlantic University, and then they matriculate to what we call finishing schools. A.D. Henderson, a great example. Uh, most, uh, the overwhelming number of people watching this broadcast say, great, uh, my children don't go there. Maybe they don't have that opportunity. But you talked very eloquently and forcefully about the challenges we face that A.D. Henderson's trying to help us cope with. Talk about the challenges we face in this country. We see numbers that we're behind other developed countries significantly. I think only one in five students ready to go to college to tackle STEM core subjects. How big is the challenge? Encapsulate that for our audience. Well, it's significant. Uh, and I use the historical example of, of Sputnik. So in 1957, Soviet Union launches Sputnik. In 1961, Yuri Gagarin yeah. uh, orbits the Earth. Uh, at that point, we were at a precipice in this country. We had a decision to make, uh, and we did. Uh, we began the space race, as they called it. And from that, even today, uh, DARPA, the arm of research for the military, NASA, was created from that from that space race. We're at the same point now. Uh, you mentioned the scores, uh, 30th out of 36 developed countries uh, as we compare in math and science and our nation's report card, reading and math scores are falling woefully behind. Uh, it's the worst math scores that we've seen in three decades. So when you uh, use Some your- Some argue COVID has a role in those latest math certainly, scores. Certainly does. Mm -hmm. uh, when you use your education platform as an inflection point, which is what we do, uh, we focus on the hard sciences of math uh, and 
a variety of different sciences that we had an opportunity to walk through the school and, and take a look at those labs. Uh, that's the key point. It's about bringing science and math to life. And what do we lose if we don't begin to get back in the game? We're far behind. So A, can we catch up? And B, if we don't, what's at stake not only for these students, their futures, their ability to get jobs, but for you and me? So it's a national security threat. When you define what is a national security threat, it's anything that threatens capitalism or threatens the democracy or both. When you see our test scores continue to fall behind, we're threatening both of those, the ability to compete internationally and the ability to sustain our democracy. And that's why we're so laser focused on the work that we do there each and every day. And really, it's our st teaching staff. They are the secret sauce of what we accomplish there. How so? The teachers uh, have and built... Beyond the obvious, the teachers, I, I think, are angels in the classroom. Sure. And, uh, but when you say secret sauce, specifically to your school, I should say. Well, it's a culture of understanding that uh, expectations must increase year to year. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are responsible uh, for what happens in their classrooms. And they're responsible as measured by test scores. They take that responsibility very seriously. And they work countless hours, uh, both during the school day and, and oftentimes on the weekends. Doctor, it wants a bleak picture about what happens if we don't suddenly uh, get our act together uh, nationally. Uh, A.D. Henderson's the example of what can happen. What are you seeing, uh, you and your colleagues in education, statewide, nationally? Uh, are we gonna meet the challenge or are we not? And is A.D. Henderson and our other schools like it around the nation in the vanguard of that? Or are we going to see that we'll only ha really have pockets, uh, big pockets of education poverty and we're gonna fall farther and farther behind? Sum it up. So programmatically, I think we are, uh one of the best test cases or laboratories for what schools can be throughout the United States. We work hard at replicating our schools. We're right now we're working with the, uh, with the state of Virginia, uh, replicating lab schools, uh, at least 20 of them, they're mm -hmm. standing up in the next three years. Uh, so that's our goal as well, is to replicate what we do. Conversely, if we don't take a serious look at how we're educating students and what we're doing as far as uh, promoting science, technology, engineering, math in a classroom, we will continue to fall further behind and become more dependent outside the United States. I think I've heard your takeaway message, but just in case, because I, I, I feel, uh, as you do, and so many, that the future for our children, our grandchildren, so critically important. What final key message that maybe I've not touched on with your XPC, you absolutely want to make sure sticks with our viewers? I think everybody owns this, right? The parents at home own it, the grandparents, the schools, uh, the, the politicians. Everybody needs to come together as they did uh, back in the 1950s and 60s and take a serious look at how we're allocating resources, uh, the priorities in this country, and refocusing those on math and science. A.D. Henderson, FAU's A.D. Henderson University School and High School, certainly in the vanguard of that effort among public schools. And Dr. Joel Herbst, superintendent and assistant dean there, we very much thank you for having us over to the school and for bringing this critical message to our viewers. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it so much. Up next, News Channel 5's Brian Crowley. What did he have to say, among other things, to the League of Women Voters? That and much more with Brian and Mark.